Thanks everyone for coming. Um, my name is Kim Pepper. I'm the technical director and co-founder at Previous Next. And um, I have been working with Drupal for quite a number of years, about eight years in total. Um, I did a fair amount of work in Drupal 8 development before, before Drupal 8 came out. And I've got a confession to make. So this talk, I kind of didn't really know much about workflows. And I kind of um, used this as an opportunity to kind of go in and learn what it actually was and then be able to come and present that information to you. So um, it's, it's, it's a learning experience, and I'm going to share that with you. So um, sorry, excuse me. Oh, come on. There we go. OK, so before we jump into workflows, um, I'm just going to go back and just cover you know, where it came from. So um, Workbench Moderation was the module in Drupal 7. And I don't know how many of you out there actually used Workbench Moderation. Yeah, so a good number of you. So. Um, Essentially, it provides a, a, a tool for managing you know, a, a structured way of publishing content where you can have different editors kind of edit it, and then other editors, you know, other publishers publish that content. Um, and we used it in most of our sites. It's the Drupal 7. It, it came around in Drupal 7. Um, and it's actually been a contrib module since about 2011, so it's got quite a long history. Um, it's also a very popular module, so have about 30,000 downloads. But it kind of tried to work around a few of Drupal 7's um, you know, idiosyncrasies. It, 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 there was a general lack of um, forward revision support in Workbench moderation. Um, and there was some pretty funky stuff going on in the earlier versions of Workbench, mo workbench moderation to, to handle that. So things like registering shutdown functions that would kind of come in at the very end of a, a, a um, saving your node and then kind of do another save and things like that. Um, it just it just had to work around some of the missing APIs in, in Drupal 7. Um, but by the time it got to the 3.0 vision of, um, of Workbench moderation, um, they'd kind of matured. It, uh, Catch, who's a, uh, one of the Drupal core contributors, came out with a, a drafty module um, which tried to kind of handle all of those use cases around forward revisions and uh, Workbench Moderation 3.0 um, used that instead of having all of its own kind of crafty internals. So what have we got in, in, uh, in Drupal 8? So Drupal 8, as you know, um, came out with, um, I guess, it came out and, and fixed a lot of the, the kind of core underlying issues. So. Uh, things like pending forward revisions, all of those things were, were sorted out in, in Drupal 8. Um, in, in Drupal 8.2, content moderation was introduced as a, an experimental module. Um, it essentially was a, a copy from Workbench moderation. And in 8.3, uh, they decided to split out the, the workflows aspect of it into its own separate module. Um, yeah, so uh, essentially, it's currently a beta module. Um, uh, content moderation is a beta module, but the workflow module in, in 8.4 is actually a, a full release. So what is the workflows module? So the workflows module is essentially a module for creating state machines. Um, so the question is, what is a state machine? So essentially, a state machine consists of, of states and then um, the transitions between those states. So it essentially defines the rules for how you can move from one state to another. Um, and you can query the state machine to find out you know, what the next available transitions are, so where you can go from one state to the next. So I thought it might be useful to kind of have a, a fairly simple diagram to explain um, this concept. So this is a, a, a state machine diagram. Um, and you can see here we've got some predefined states. So this is um, a door, right? So um, you know, you've got three states. You've got op open, closed, and locked. Um, you can go from, from open to closed and closed to locked, but you can't go from open to locked directly without going through closed first, right? So there's only a certain allowable set of um, transitions that you can do between these states. Um, 
So yeah, so a, a state machine, it defines states, um, it defines the allowed transitions between those states, and given a particular state, you can query it to find out what are the next allowed states that you can go on. These are the, the content moderation states that are in 8.4, so that's fairly simple. Um, I know if you've worked with workbench moderation in Drupal 7, you might have had more than these. Um, essentially, we've got a single, uh, a, a draft state, a published state, and an archive state. And there's a bunch of transitions that are defined. So um, you can see, for example, I think the second one's the easiest one to explain it, but you can, you can, you're allowed to go from a draft to a published state. Um, but you can see you can move from um, published to archived and you can um, switch back from archived and create a new one and go back into um, to draft. Um, there is a little bit of um, interesting things going on here with like being able to go from draft to draft, for example, and that's got a lot to do with how content moderation works with revisions and creating new revisions and those kinds of things. Um, so if we were to put this into uh, a state uh, a state diagram. Um, this is essentially a fairly simplistic workflow, right? So you can see you've got your three states and the transition between those states. Um, I usually find it's easier to kind of conceptualise these things um, when you have a diagram and you can visualise them. All right, so let's just dive in. Before we kind of get stuck into to workflows, I wanted to just have a look at what is content moderation actually doing? So, um, essentially, there's a bunch of things. It's quite, it's quite a, a complex module. So, it's, it's obviously providing those, those states and transitions that I just showed you, but it's also doing a lot of other things. So, um, it's has, it has to store all that configuration state. So, there's actually a content, content moderation entity underlying in there that is actually hidden from you, but it's actually, that stores all of the, the, uh, an individual entity's current state and, and so on. It's obviously managing all of the configuration for what is the allowed, um, uh, what, what entity bundles uh, are allowed to use content moderation and what kind of workflow they're using. Um, there's also the state storage and there's also a whole bunch of permissions. Uh, so yeah, there's essentially um, uh, quite a lot going on in there. Uh, things like content entity, uh, content moderation entity are likely to go away. They've been marked as internal, so um, you can't really, you know, rely on that being around if you're doing any customizations. So this is just, a, I guess, a few of the forms that you would typically get when you're when you're um, uh, building out a content moderation. So you have to, you're allowed to specify what content types it applies to, um, and then you're you're able to go in and and um, specify like what are the different states that this particular um, bundle is allowed to do. So you can see you, you can specify which states are unpublished states and which, st which states are published states. Uh, also um, what the default state should be when you create a new instance. So if you're familiar with um, workbench moderation in Drupal 7, this should look pretty familiar. So um, all of the the permissions uh, around um, what state an individual users can go to is all managed through the permission system. So, um, yeah, I mean, I won't go through all the different permissions, but essentially that's, that's how it's controlled, through permissions. Um, so there are also a bunch of forms that content moderation needs to support. So um, all of these things are, are, are provided by the content moderation module. So. Um, at the top here is one that you would typically see on the top of a node edit form, um, or, or sorry, mm -hmm. when you're viewing a, a node. So that basically exists because in some situations you might have a, um, a user has a, the permission to publish content but not edit content. So um, they're able to change the, the state at the top of a node and then, and then push it live. Um, and you've also got all of these um, additions to the revisions table so you can um, you know, change, um, change state through that and also at the bottom, now you might be familiar with those where you, where you go to save something and you can, you can change its workflow state. So all of these things are provided by that content moderation module. So what do you need to do in order to build your own workflows? So 
I'm going to use an issue tracker as, a, as an example. Um, obviously, I'm not building a whole issue tracker during this session, but uh, it's just there to give you an idea about what the kinds of things that you could think of um, when, you're, when you're building your own workflows. So this is our, our state machine for our issue tracker. So we're just defining three states. Um, obviously, most issue trackers have way more states than this. Um, we're just going to allow users, uh, issues to go from new to in progress to resolve. And we're only allowing a new issue to, to go to in progress. We never actually allow, um, you know, say, a resolved issue to go back to being new, for example. So we're able to, to restrict it there. Um, but remember that um, workflows are only state machines. So that we're, only, we're only defining the states and the allowed transitions. They don't actually provide any of the storage. So we have to provide that if we're building an issue tracker. Um, so this is what you need. So the um, workflows module essentially provides um, an API for you to be able to create plugins. So you'll need a workflow type plugin. Um, <laughs> We definitely need the workflows config, which is what we what um, we saw with content moderation. So setting up those states and those transitions, but we all might also need things like where are we going to store that state, um, what how are we going to manage permissions around this, um, and what kind of forms do we need to provide to end users in order for them to be able to manage this this uh, these issues and the states. It's it's basically left for you to do yourself. So the first thing is. Um, the workflow type. So I'm not going to go in to show pages and pages of code here. I just wanted to give you an idea about where you can kind of start and then, and then where, you know, where you can go from there. So, so to create a workflow type plugin, it's the standard Drupal plugin approach where essentially you just have to create a class. It has to be in a specific directory for Drupal to find it um, with a specific namespace. Um, so this is a pattern that if you've written plugins before, you'd be pretty familiar with. Um, and then we just provide the, the annotations for defining a new workflow type. So here I've just got a, a simple example where I've given it a, um, an ID of my workflows and a label. Um, I can specify required states. So what that means is that um, in the, in the form like where you where you are able to manage the states, you can mark some as being required so that they cannot be deleted. So um, this basically just is a a, a thing to uh, remove that delete button from the uh, from the state configuration page. Um, and this this configure form essentially allows you to put in additional form controls at the bottom of that state um, configuration page, so that if you need have to have specific things in there that you can do that and yeah we'll, we'll have a look at that in a sec. Um, and then last thing is basically creating a, a, a class so you can extend the workflow type base class um, and the only thing you really have to implement is this get initial state so um, yeah basically that's that's the bare minimum that you need to create your own custom workflow type. So that's, that's number one ticked off, right? But there's a whole bunch of other things that we need to do. So, um, you know, do we need to, pr to provide state storage? Um, do we, how are we going to handle permissions and forms? So there has to be an easier way than, than everybody kind of doing this over and over again every time you create your own custom workflow, right? Uh, and fortunately, there is a module um, out there written by Sam over there called Workflows Field. And this essentially simplifies a lot of the, the kind of boilerplate stuff that you, that you want to do. So what does Workflows field do? Um, so it provides a field which allows you to store the states of any content entity and ensure the states are changing um, according to the, work, the transitions defined by the core workflow, workflows. Right? So essentially what this module is doing is basically managing all of that per um, no or per bundle, oh, sorry, per content entity um, individual storage of their states and and then talking to the workflows API to understand what the allowed transitions are between those states. Okay, so just going through the steps of creating a new workflow using this workflow field module. So essentially when you enable the workflows field module and you go to the workflows page and you hit add workflow, you get a new option um, in a drop-down list which 
is the workflows field module. So because we're creating an issue tracker, for our example, um, we'll get, we're going to call it issue status. Um, and then once we do that, we can then go and use the standard workflows uh, config pages to go and create our states. Um, so here we're creating new in progress and resolve, much like we showed in that state diagram earlier. And then we can go in and configure our transitions. So um, these essentially just map up to those that I showed in that diagram earlier, where um, if I want to go from uh, new, I can go directly to resolved, or I can go to in progress, start progress. It's basically going from new to in progress and so on. So all of these, uh, they were just defining the rules that we had in those diagrams before. Um, and the other thing is that it allows us to configure the initial state. So um, this, is the, this is what uh, gets appended to the bottom of the, that, that, um, that config page in order for us to know when we create a new one, what, what state should we be? And that's, um, if you saw the, the, the code I had before, which was like get the initial state, this is what it's using um, to, to, to specify that. Okay, so... Um, in our issue tracker, we need something to uh, uh, attach our, our issue tracking workflow to. So um, you would go and create a content type, for example, for an issue. Um, you could, it could easily be a custom entity, depending on what you want to do, but we're just using a content type for the purposes of the demo. Um, and then this is where the kind of configuration of an individual content type comes in. Because it's a field, it's easy to just go in and say, all right, I want to add a new field. Um, it's, it's a workflows field. And then I can specify which workflow I'm attaching to the, this content type. So on the right-hand side here, I've chosen the issue status workflow, which is the one we <coughs> created just a second ago. And of course, just um, only allowing it to have one workflow. Um, and then we go and create an issue. So um, this is just the node edit form for our, our issue <coughs> content type. Um, and you can see at the bottom we've got a new drop down here. Um, it's in the initial state that we said we were going to use of new. Um, yeah, so essentially we're, we're, we've already got it up and running pretty quickly. So the next thing is to do, just go through and test out that we've got our transitions working correctly, right? So um, when we've created a new one, we've got these three options here that you can transition to. Um, if we've got it marked as uh, in progress, we can only change the state to resolved. And likewise, if, we've, if we're in resolved state, we can only change the state back to in progress. So this is workflows field module, essentially allowing, um, enforcing that the workflow transitions are being um, enforced. All right, we're done. We created an issue tracker, right? So um, that's that's pretty much it. But obviously, it's not completely finished. It's just a simple example of how workflows might be done. There's a few other questions remaining. So, um, you know, do we need permissions? So, um, workflows fields do, workflows field doesn't currently have enforce any of these permissions. There is an issue in there to to allow you to do that, and that would essentially uh, replicate what the content moderation module is doing with its transitions. So you could specify, uh, you know, like in, in your issue tracking um, software or in your issue tracker that, you know, you only want to allow certain users of certain roles to mark issues resolved. You could be basically enforce that through permissions. Um, and there might be other considerations there around, you know, notifications and those kinds of things. Um, you know, you could use the flag module or add a custom event handle or so on to, to send notifications. Um, but I guess this is a question out to the audience. Um, you know, how would you think of you being able to use this workflows module in, in, in your, you know, in your particular use case? Has anyone got any ideas about what they wanted to do? Yes. Um, I've done a lot with workflows, but not with content moderation or the, the one that's here. I've used the workflow module which is a different concrete module and set up some quite extensive sort of business workflows for applications I've built for something like 14 states in them and them yeah. and um, all controls. And it would seem to me that this um, 
the workflows module with the workflows field, we're starting to give the same kind of functionality that was present in the workflow module. Yeah. Yeah, that's right. So workflows existed. <coughs> workflow module in, existed in Drupal seven. I'm not sure whether it had a port to Drupal eight, but you're right. Like so. So what what this means now is that you've got a um, a core API there for being able to create workflows. And th and the real benefit of it being a core API is obviously um, you know there's there's been a lot of work in in ensuring that it works seamlessly with the rest of core. Um, it's well supported. It's well tested. Um, and I think one of the reasons I, decided I wanted to do a talk on workflows was just essentially to um, shine a light on a new API that was, or a new module that was in, in core that many people might not have been aware of or thought about how they could actually use it. Um, yeah, so, I mean, there are a I really had one idea, and I was hoping to get some participation from the audience about this, about how you could actually use workflows. And one, one idea is around, um, you know, the concept of having multi-step forms, you know, you, you can go from one, you could define a set of, uh, you know, form um, pages or form steps as states and, and specify what the allowed transitions are through those. Um, but yeah, I mean, it's essentially, it's a new API and I think there's, there's plenty of use cases out there for people to... The particular examples where different people have to do different parts of a transaction and you can step through it and enforce that with the permissions or yep. those states. Yeah, so the comment just for the recording was that um, different people, you could set it up so different people have different access to be able to change, um, b transition between the different states. Okay, cool. So has anyone got any other questions? Yeah. yeah. Um, will this play nicely with um, paragraphs or translation management? Um, so, I think there is a there is a known issue with content moderation and and translations, um, but that has more to do with um, revisions. So, um, just so you're aware, so the the issue is that um, you can have pending forward revi revisions in one one particular language. Um, the way that um, translations work is it's going to allow you to do revisions, but at the point that you change. Yeah, the, so the English or the default language version to the default revision, it can can no longer track those, and they all have to kind of be reset to the that revision. So, it's um, I don't know if there's a core issue for resolving that, or if there's any. Yeah. No. Cool. Um, all right. So it's a little bit shorter than than uh, than. 40 minutes, but if anyone wants to come and chat to me about what you could potentially do with workflows, then feel free to come and chat after the session. Thank you.